ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We have a liftoff. What's up, Doom Nation, and welcome back, and welcome to any new listeners we might have gained. You are listening to the Two Doom Men podcast. As always, it's Skaggs and yours truly, the captain. It is Thirsty Thursday. We're having a few drinks. We're live on kick. Skaggs, tell them what we're talking about today. Trying something different. Uh, we just had the boys up here talking about kick last week, so we're going to be we're trying here to stream on kick. Uh, bear with me if there's any technical difficulties, because there always is. When it comes to mm. uh, technology. So uh, if you're listening, productions. yeah, this will, of course, go up on all the, the regular uh, platforms as well. So if you're listening after the fact, uh, go check us out on kick. Uh, go to kick dot com slash two doom men. You could uh, follow us there. I think we're going to try going live on kick exclusively for a little bit. See what we could get away with saying on here and uh, see if mm-hmm. we can build a little live streaming following. We have a uh, test okay. coming up for kick. We'll, we'll keep yeah, that low. We're going to with a couple of good gonna, old boy guests. Exactly. We're going to we're going to put that to the we're going to test kicks metal. Just put it that way. Yeah. With the with the boys. So uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin's death. Uh, if you didn't know, his plane fell out of the sky yesterday out over there in Russia. Uh, COVID is apparently making a return. Uh, so we ah. will <laughs> we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then, of course, we have to touch on the uh, GOP debate last night and uh, Trump's interview with Tucker at the exact same time. So so that's all kind of like one hodgepodge topic. Uh, It's 8.03 right now on the East Coast. And I don't know if you've been paying attention, Cap. Has Trump been arrested yet in Georgia? I'm expecting Uh, like some point during this for us to get the the photo. yeah, I guess during the our podcast it'll happen, but last I saw it was like seven forty five and he's like, I just landed and he was supposed to be there at like seven thirty. I don't know. Yeah, so that's interesting. Keep an eye on that. I'll maybe get my uh, yeah. my mugshot that I can hang up here in the shack in the back. Yeah. At some point. <clears throat> who was the one who smiled? Because that was a great mugshot. Yeah, yeah. So so, so yesterday there was some yeah, there was mugshots of like Rudy and uh Jenna yeah. Ellis and some of the other people, like the lawyers. Yeah. Dude, for real quick, so a side note, we'll start with this, I guess. Like the fact that they're charging the lawyers with yeah. stuff is crazy. You can't even be a lawyer mm-hmm. for someone anymore. Are we yeah. gonna now like if you're a murderer and then you go to court and you have a lawyer, like and you get found guilty of murder, we're gonna also no. throw the lawyer in jail. Like that's where we're at here now <laughs> with this whole thing. Just make up the rules as you go along. That's yeah. what they do. That's crazy. All right, so let's get into this uh, Prigozhin. Yeah, yeah let's just f- falling out of the sky, yeah. man. It's crazy, isn't it? Right, like you led you lead two coups in, in like three months and you end up dead. What a weird, what a weird situation to find yourself I know, in. Right? What a yeah, surprising, right? Uh, I thought the I thought the Icarus cl- flew too close to the sun quote was perfect for this, right? It looks like you know, obviously Icarus flying too close to the sun. Like you try and go for the top spot and you end up getting burnt. At the end of the day, and he literally was flying and got burnt, got blown up. Um, The official story, I guess, is that his plane crashed in Russia. I think everyone at this point, including probably me and you, assume Vladimir Putin got his revenge for the Wagner coup. We talked about this Mm -hmm. for like two episodes we had on Casimir, uh, you know, Russian expat to talk to us about it. I think Casimir kind of was a little bit wrong here, too. He was, uh, you know, he was debating if uh, Putin was really the man pulling the strings anymore. Uh, I think this, at least in my opinion, and we could get down to (laughs) all the alternatives here that might have happened here. But uh, my take on this whole thing, man, is, yes, this was Putin, uh, and he set an example for everyone now. He didn't do the old-fashioned, I'm going to poison you, Vladimir Putin, and, like, quietly kill you in a few years. No, he literally made an example out of Yevgeny Yevgeny Prigozhin over the skies Mm -hmm. of Russia for all to see. Um, yep. and then he gave a little talk today, Putin, uh, you know, talking about how, you know, uh, Prigozhin, you know, he was, uh, a good man for Russia, but he made a couple of mistakes as well. And it was pretty cold so blooded shit, him. dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Like I was telling you before we went on air, I was watching that and I feel like at the end of every sentence Putin said, he could have just simply added in. So I killed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've known him since the mid nineties. So I killed him. 
it's it's wild how shit works over there. It's like it literally we said it's like mm. Game of Thrones, man. I don't think it's just over there. I think it's over here too. I think oh, yeah. it's everywhere. But I think it's I way more know. cavalier over there. Yeah. The way they yes. do things. Yeah, it's it's much more message sending over there where uh, everybody kind of knows what's going on. Yep. Um so what, what do you think, man? What do you think of the whole thing? What do you think it, it is? Uh, you What's know, your where are you placing uh, your bet on what exactly happened? He should have stuck to selling hot dogs. <laughs> um, you know, uh, running his restaurant. I think I think he killed him. Uh, you know, the days of, you know, these people in question who challenge authority or have information that will imprison the Clintons or or any of this nature. All, you know, we see I think the days of, you know, being like, oh, maybe it was a car accident is over. They killed him. They killed him. We're smart enough to know how this shit works now. We we are in unprecedented times. It is the craziest it's ever been. And it this is this is just politics. It's the Game of Thrones at this point. It's politics as usual let, in Russia. Yeah. This man led a coup, try, attempted a coup against Putin, then went down to Africa and helped them throw a coup in Niger. Yeah, that's interesting, and, right? Because and then uh, comes back and gets killed. Yeah, uh, shit. How many people did this man piss off this summer? Mm -hmm. A lot. You know. Yeah. He yeah. Was, yeah. He was public enemy number one. Yeah, that's interesting. You said he was down in Africa, right? On um, let's see, what's today? Today is Thursday, right? On uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday was the first time I'd seen Prigozhin kind of resurface anywhere, and I saw. Uh, people tweeting that it was a photo of him and that he's down in Africa, like doing recruiting now for that whole mm -hmm. thing that we talked about a couple episodes, like the eco was and the Niger coup and 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 all that stuff. Um, so he kind of resurfaces, and then the next day he's blown up in the sky, uh, or his plane goes yeah. down. That's interesting yeah. in of itself. I, either, I haven't heard from him the whole like, time. Yeah, either like like we said, someone killed him, or he faked his own death. Yeah. Like you said yesterday. Oh, look, you know? the uh, the Trump. Let's see. I think the Trump mugshot has been released. Sorry to go oh off boy. topic here. Let's see if I just hold it up here rather than go looking for it on the on the look at that. Oh man, what a scowl. He should have wow. smiled. I don't know he if the, I can't smiled. confirm hundred percent if that's real or not, but boy, that is a mean mug right there. Yeah. He should have smiled, yeah. Yeah. It looks pretty intense. Um, all right. Well, all right. So let, let's, whatever, let's, that'll be next week's episode. Yeah, or or I, that's, I'm going to get that frame and put that up here. I think that's interesting. I mean, I'll put it right behind me. I'll, I'll replace Gandalf over there. Put Trump scowling. Yeah, maybe my over new my background shoulder. will be all the mug shots. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you just put, yeah, yeah just do the green screen. It's just that it's just Trump yeah. behind you. So you like literally yes. encompassing the entire thing. Yeah. That'd be pretty fucking funny. Um, all right. So, so let's wrap up progression here. Right. I also think. I, I've said a couple times on social media, it's equally as likely that he faked his own death here to escape. But I'm going to I'm going to retract equally and I'm going to say it's 60 40. Right. Like <laughs> I'm going to say it's 60 percent, in my opinion, odds that Putin killed him. Forty percent that he um, yeah. faked his own death here. And uh, one of the yeah, things I, I found girl summer. Oh, yeah, he did. Literally. <laughs> one, one of the things I found funny, man, you find it some. Um, entertaining too is uh like this is a rabbit hole obviously you could go down and uh when i put i've been posting newsworthy clips on social media right and uh, i've le learned like if i make an assumption in the title people will come after you about what it says <laughs> so uh, i when i posted this clip i said uh you know like putin i essentially said like that putin killed Prigozhin, and people go are, are like angry they're like he killed himself it's this it's that like they're you know Offering opinion, their yeah. offering, but they're they're offering like their contrarian point of view. And I'm just laughing because I'm like, well, me saying Putin killed him is already the conspiracy theory. Yeah. Right. Like the official story is that the plane crashed. But sometimes, and again, this is what we've talked about a lot lately in the conspiracy theory world, you can get a bit contrarian, right? And now everyone thinks Putin killed him. That is the conspiracy theory. But some of these people who were really far down the rabbit hole, they just like they just have to take a contrarian point of view yeah it, it, so i just thought that was a little bit interesting in the conspiracy theory world it was funny someone was yelling at me on our tiktok page uh that they're gonna go and like do the research and find out where yeah, sorry that where this uh we'll have you on pal yeah like where this came from like where this uh video that i posted came from like i'll, I'll help you i got it from jack Basobic. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, and I'm, I, you know, like, good luck. Like, I hope you crack the case of who killed Yevgeny Prigozhin, some random uh, TikTok follower. Yeah. All right. So from, uh, oh, it was taken down already. 
So I got a message from Truth Social yeah. saying the mugshot. Maybe the that mugshot was... on the left is a fake. Okay, maybe and that wasn't this it. This whole post got taken down yeah. already. I, I, I saw, don't know. I saw the Krasenstein's. The Krasenstein's tweeted it and they said, is this the real mugshot? So maybe that wasn't it. But that was pretty fucking funny. I like that one. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, Go ahead, man. What's next? What's next? Who's next? Oh, I, COVID. Imagine COVID, that. Man. Imagine that. COVID. I can't man. believe we're you know, going to have to talk about this like like this again. I, you know what, though? Don't be. Yeah. Don't be. Yeah, you're right. Um, because, <laughs> all right, so the story is, and if you're still underestimating Alex Jones, you're a simpleton. All right. The time of underestimating people like him is over. Is he right 100% of the time? No, he is not. But, you know, with everything that happened to us around COVID, I'm going to kind of buy this story. He met with a TSA whistleblower who said there was a meeting in TSA that come September, mask mandates are going to be coming back. And by mid-October, full uh, tyrannical COVID measures will be taking place again. Uh, He reached out to some friends in the intelligence community. One of them confirmed, yes, they had the same meeting. Shortly after that, two or three universities or indoctrination camps told their students they're going to need to start wearing masks again. Uh, Lionsgate, the uh, the film company, uh, put out a, a, an email that you're going to need to start socially distancing, wearing masks. And boy, I'm going to start off by saying I am not going to fucking comply one bit. What I hope this is is when the government puts out its feelers to test mm-hmm. the waters. Right. Share this moment. Yeah. Talk about this moment, everybody. Let the government know before they try and do this that this shit not is not gonna fucking fly anymore or ever again. Yeah. Ever fucking again. I agree with that. There is value in like sounding the alarm on these things early now, just because mm-hmm. there is some aspect to that, like literally testing the waters. We saw that with the with the vaccine passport. Like they started floating yeah. out the idea and then they started like really floating out the idea and there was a lot of pushback. So they brought it back. Yeah. Um, I do think, however, there is no end ever to tyranny yeah. and these things like we were telling our friends this like there's the famous yeah. quote by Thomas Jefferson. Uh, Freedom requires eternal vigilance. Right. So we always have to be on top of this so long as we have uh, this, is, especially since we have this insanely large government. I found this story, dude, to be really interesting. <coughs> Sorry, because. um. Alex Jones kind of set the tone here. He set the tone and he set like the news cycle. Normally when we see shit like this happen, it's the corporate press, right? Like they kind of, mm-hmm. although we've all, we, we've like said, oh, you know, like they're losing their influence and they're losing their numbers corporate and their power. Corporate press died last night. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like they kind of set whatever is being spoken about and then mm-hmm. a lot of people react to that. Uh, including Mm -hmm. us and including like every other big show, like they'll do something crazy or they'll start spinning the next agenda and everybody will react to it. I thought this was the inverse for once. Um, I felt like Mm -hmm. Jones was the first person to even suggest this like a week and a half ago, whatever it was. And then all those stories you quoted uh, afterwards started happening. So that's interesting. Either he's that far ahead of the the, Mm -hmm. uh, curve or we're seeing now we're at the point where, like, they've lost so much power. Yeah. The corporate maybe press. this is the cure to fuck over mainstream media. You know, somebody yeah. like Alex Jones has to drop the story before the agenda is set. Yeah, or like, yeah. just they're, they've become so unpopular that perhaps, yeah. like, even in the institutions themselves, like, people are now going to yeah. Alex Jones to like blow the whistle first thing, like the first someone mm-hmm. hears of it. Perhaps yeah. that's happening. I, I, I don't know, but that, I thought that was an um, interesting tidbit on this whole thing. Right. So what I have formulated through this, because this has been under my skin and I've listened to a couple of other people's episodes that touched upon this uh, topic. It's a lot. It's a lot to go over. It's a lot to cover. But first and foremost, nice try. It's an election year and COVID comes back. Get the fuck. Yeah, it's a lot to ask everyone to like believe again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I I don't know how this is going to work. Because with all the mandates and the lockdowns, you get to blame that on Trump. So we're going to lock down the economy and champion Joe Biden. Right. Now. We're going to oh, Joe Biden is saying how much he grew the economy because he started from zero because they reopened the economy from him. 
So now we're going to shut it down under him. I highly doubt all that. Like those things are pretty but, uh, contradictory to uh, yes to the normal like yes. pre- prevailing thought on why they would yeah. be doing this. Yeah, I agree with that. And I mean, we we've, we've already been through this playbook, but I think there is some interesting facts here. One, we are going to see how many people woke up over the past few years. I think a lot more people are going to fight back on this. But the more people fight back on this. You know, those FEMA camps might come into play. Or, or remember how crazy Australia got. Yeah. That could happen here. And it's gonna, you know, thank yeah. God for the Second Amendment. But, uh, but the silver lining to all this is, so you started this by saying, can you believe that we got to talk about this again? And I'm glad we're going to talk about this again because I love America. I love the American people, but the American people are stupid. And they're also the most propagandized fucking people in the history of the earth. And COVID, I mean, destroyed lives. It changed history. And then once it was over and people were able to go out free nilly willy and do as they please, they just went on to support Ukraine and support the next thing and support the aliens. And they forgot about COVID. I'm glad this is kind of coming back because we, the people, cannot forget what they did to us during covid and if we have to take a second run at it to refresh everybody then fine let's fucking take a refresher course in what took place during covid that should never be allowed to happen in this country let's rewake people up let's remind them what was going on back then because it wasn't right i mean all the, the science has been disproven the vaccines have been disproven the origin has been disproven. Everything that we were called conspiracy theorists for has all come to light, all come true, and you're going to play this game again. I really would like to see how you're going to fucking do this one. Yeah, and as we've said many times, usually when we have on a guest that's a podcaster, like the explosion mm-hmm. in number of podcasts that occurred because of COVID, yeah. yeah, like, again, like from the regime point of view, like you want to do this again because you like radicalized and woke up more people than probably have ever happened before by, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, putting your your finger on the scale, like had a, an, yep. an op, equal and opposite reaction, if not more. So uh, that's interesting, without a doubt. Perhaps people do need a little bit of a refresher course. Uh, I've even gotten annoyed at, to- at times in this, uh, you know, this primary uh, where, like, we've, you know, people will try and bring up COVID and some people try and dismiss it. Like, even on the Republican side, they'll be like, that's like old news. No one cares about that. The fuck mm. out of here. No, I, I yeah, think because Fauci still needs to go it. to prison. Yeah. Like, no, we shouldn't yeah. forget yeah. about it. And like, yeah, of course, we should talk about like future things and whatnot. But there can be no reconciliation here at the same you time, know, at I least was, in my opinion. There needs to be some yeah. accountability. I think I, I've been listening to a lot of Tim Pool, so I'm pretty sure it happened on one of his episodes where he talked about it. he's like, the government will always admit what they do. It'll just be later on right. when it doesn't matter anymore, when it's not in public opinion anymore, when it's not going to stop somebody from getting elected. We knew COVID came from a bio lab. We knew the NIH funded Eco Alliance and that that Fauci, you know, signed off on it. But you know what? It's so far removed now they could admit to that. You know what I mean? Back then, if they admitted to it, World War III takes place, Civil War takes sure. place. Now admitting it, people are lax. They don't care. And, They're more yeah. worried about supporting Ukraine, yep. supporting the new thing. It doesn't affect their life anymore. So it's easy for them to admit it now. Yeah. And, and to bring it back is going to be interesting. And like never, uh, never discount how quickly they'll turn on the drop of a dime, the mm-hmm. whole narrative or whatever it is they're trying to do. Like when we had on Clint Russell and we were talking to him about this. And we were saying, remember, like at the time, they were starting to be like, let's have hearings about the origins of COVID because Mm -hmm. we think it did come from the lab in Wuhan. And we were all like, whoa, like, why? Now, why are you so interested? Right now, at the time, it was like really high tensions with uh, with China and Taiwan, right? Like Nancy Pelosi had just gone over there. And we were all like, yeah, they're beating the war drums, right? Like at at any given moment. They could turn the narrative on the drop of a dime. It'd be like, we should go to war with China because it did mm-hmm. leak from a from yeah. Wuhan at the lab. And you guys were all right the whole time. We're on your side yeah. now. Don't you want to go yeah. and fight, you know, and defend Taiwan to defend the, uh, you know, the semiconductors over there at TSMC? You know what I'm saying? So always like yeah. we should inoculate ourselves against that sort of bullshit. Listen, I, I will for now until the election, 
for the establishment, the DNC, mm-hmm. any bad faith actors, it's all hands on deck. They need to yeah. attack from every direction, whether it's another COVID lockdown, whether it's a climate crisis, a manufactured climate crisis, uh, whether it's, in, you know, put Trump uh, in jail for 789 yeah. years or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Indictments or just trying to get his name removed from uh, one or two yeah. ballots in California, two, two or three different states. So we can't get, you know, 270 electoral votes. All hands are on deck. Nothing is off the table leading to 2024 and don't but yeah i was gonna say don't know, rule out a an october surprise either in uh, yeah. 2020 october 2024 yeah. right like yeah. i don't know last some night, random thing happened yeah last night when one of our police buddies was like oh no uh, somebody was shot in brooklyn apparently a police officer did it and it didn't happen that way he was mistaken and he corrected himself but i was getting ready to type like welcome to the 2024 yeah, you know, campaign election se- season. Campaign we've, cycle. We've already yeah. seen this movie. Yeah. We've already seen this movie. Yeah. You know? so, Again, then like the yeah. So you're right. Perhaps a, a refresher is needed, and the more they try and do things like that, the harder we'll get. Uh, yeah. I think there's evidence yeah. that um, there's evidence in like the rate of people getting the jab, right? Like a lot of people got the first two, right? And uh, and yeah, at the time they like tried to like make you lose your job and all those things, but uh, as time went on and we said it, I remember, like, we had Shane in here, and I'm like, do you really think people are going to take boosters in perpetuity forever? Every six yeah, months for and, the rest and of And Shane yeah. was like, no, I, I think that's yeah. ridiculous. And as you see, like, if you look at the stats, uh, the rate of people taking the booster drops tremendously each time. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a white pill in of itself. Like, yep. people are be like, yep. yeah, what? Perpetuity. Like, we're never going to take, we're not going to take a COVID vaccine forever. So that's that's a, a little bit of a positive sign. I want to say I did a little bit of my own journalism here uh, in regards to this whole thing, and I reached out to somebody that I know who works for the Department of Homeland Security um, in this area that uh, Alex Jones had this uh, whistleblower come to him from. Uh, and so I just straight up asked him, I'm like, look, you heard anything? Like, you work there. Have you heard anything? <laughs> and uh, this person told me that uh, there's a lot of chatter in, like, amongst themselves like in Facebook groups and things like that. Uh, but it is, he was saying, it is a lot of hearsay. It's basically just rumor. He hasn't seen anything official. Nothing official has been said. Uh, he was saying that, you know, basically speculation it could be true. He's not ruling it out. Uh, but he thinks that the Alex Jones thing is fake. Um, okay, so that's what it, that's what this person and I trust this person like you know take my word for it here I guess you know I wouldn't just make this shit up um, so that was interesting I mean I, I'm not going to rule out the fact that Alex Jones is being provocative here either he mm-hmm. could be um, I say, I started by saying he's not right 100% sure. of the time yeah, you know, but, he, but yeah. if he's right, I'm I'm not playing this game again. Yeah, US it's it's a it's Joe a Biden yeah. clean out the car in your fucking yep. ears. I ain't doing it again. Again, like it's suspicious that these stories came out right after. And uh, if he's not right, it's like a like to me, it's like a no cost, uh, no cost loss. If it is yeah. like get us riled up to fight it back. Yeah. yeah, like what's the worst yeah. thing that it can happen? It doesn't happen. That's great. That's yeah. a good thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if it does, at least like we knew we tried to stop it ahead of time. So, yeah, yeah we will yeah. see. I, 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 I tend to believe him. He's been right about a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I know I'm pretty sure I can guess who your source is. I won't say it, but yeah, it's um, not get him in trouble. No, right? no, 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 of course not. But, uh, you know, this reminds me a lot of remember when Kamala Harris was going to head the disinformation, blah, 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 blah. Or that lady that they chose, the Nina yeah, Jankowitz, yeah, yeah, yeah. the singing they, lady. They the... should have got the woman from, uh, from Bud Light. Uh, to do that Dylan Mulvaney, and yeah. you know they were gonna they were gonna create the ministry of of truth yeah, yeah. essentially yep. and everybody got online and lost their shit about it and then all of a sudden it disappeared right yeah well you know what let's lose our shit people and hopefully it disappears yeah, exactly that's yeah yeah i agree all right let's uh let's move on here out of the meat and Some potatoes. potatoes yeah the gop debate and the trump uh, Tucker thing. So first of all, Cap, I was a little bit disappointed in you yesterday because we, oh. me, we're talking about this whole thing. And Captain was like, he texts in our group text. He's like, man, this fucking debate's meaningless and all it this is. shit. And I'm like, dude, it's not meaningless. There's there's never no meaning to everything. I understand that all the arguments you're going to make that uh, these guys have no chance to win. It's a waste right. of time and all this stuff. But 
let me just counter you saying it's meaningless. Dude, go and look at the stats. Uh, it, it's, it's over 200 million views Trump has gotten now on his uh, interview mm-hmm. with Tucker. Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers for the the debates, and I'm the gonna. The only number I saw for Fox and the debate it in v- quote unquote views was like twenty million, twenty nine million, okay. something like that. So let's so just shy of thirty million. Sure, and that's what uh, on their channel, perhaps twenty million. Yeah, they were on yeah. Rumble. Let's be generous. Let's double that. Tw- twenty million, you said, <laughs> right? Yeah. Let's give them forty million. Let's say forty million people watch the GOP debate. That was through Fox, which also insane. Like, we're going to be rolling the dice here, and we're going to see if we're even going to be able to share the clips that we want because yeah. uh, Fox made all these yeah. new rules. They don't want anyone sharing more than three minutes worth of their proprietary information. Um, but let's let's be generous. Let's say 40 million people watch that, right? Well, 200 plus million people watch Tucker on Twitter. <laughs> almost the entire adult population yeah, like, of America. Amazing. It, literally almost mo- yeah like it's 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 got to be close by now and this is only day yeah. two like this is not 24 yeah. hours later 24 hours yeah yeah so there's information there to be gathered right obviously we see that people are tired with the corporate press mm-hmm. right and their way of doing debates dude i thought i watched the second half of debate i thought there's some good moments which we'll, we'll show for you guys here but boy it's just like the worst form of communication it's dead. they're yelling at each other the, the moderators had no control at one point. Uh, Nikki Haley's like, you have to get control of this thing because it was just <laughs> insane. Uh, the, the, the crowd in the background yelling. I couldn't hear sometimes what yeah. the, what the candidates all pro-Trump. were yeah. saying. And then contrast that to Trump and Tucker, right? It's quiet. Yeah. They could talk for an hour uninterrupted, and you could hear exactly what they have to say. They could get into long rants about things and fully flush out whatever mm-hmm. it is they think. It's a podcast, right? And long-form conversation and podcasting is – Leaps and bounds superior to yeah. the corporate press model of like two second sound bites with a commercial and people screaming over each other mm-hmm. and no mm-hmm. point ever gets. Uh... So on top of that, look, just look at the see, numbers. Yeah, but see, I went on to, to my, you know, saying it's meaningless because first off, it's a bunch of people polling at zero, one and two <laughs> percent. Get them out of there. You want to debate, take the top three guys. I I'll give you that. Sure, I agree. I'll give yeah. you that. OK, I'll give you that. Uh, did Vivek murder DeSantis all night long and win that debate? Hell yeah. Did he establish himself as the number two in the polling race? I think Hell so. Yeah. yeah. Valuable, meaningful information. But Chris Christie is polling at what? Like one fucking percent? Two. I don't, yeah. I don't care what this fat slob has to say. Uh, to, as far as I'm concerned, Trump even said it. Everybody in the GOP, uh, running for the president should just drop out because the deep state's agenda is to take Trump off the ballot. If he, if they all drop out, which they're not, because this is politics, we understand how it works. Vivek might be the only one smart enough to realize that's how it works. But some, you asked me a few weeks ago or a few episodes ago, what is Mike Pence doing? And I Mm -hmm. said, he's there for argument's sake. He's there to stay on the ballot long Mm -hmm. enough that Trump gets knocked off in Georgia or Pennsylvania or whatever, and he can't get the 270 votes, so now you need to pick a new primary leader. You know, if they all just drop out and he's declared the GOP primary and they take him off the ballot, it's going to cause a lot of problems for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I understand you know? the, the point so, Trump's making, like, that they should all drop out. Like, I understand exactly the point that he's trying to make. Yeah. The thing is that, like, they're most likely all running against him because they're part of the fucking yeah. deep state agenda. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah you can make they're that point, sure, that. but, yeah, they're they're right, exactly. It, but yeah. It's, it's a moot point. But yeah, in – very true. In the past few days, the past few weeks, really what it comes down to now is, you know, Trump train. I'm on it. I don't care. I say I say it proudly. I think he's our best option. Um, I think Vivek's great. I think if Trump got in there, Vivek will have a bright future. I think Vivek's playing the long game. Uh, the twenty twenty eight election be a great great candidate. Uh, we're gonna need great candidates after Trump leaves office. I'm looking for, but for me personally, I'm looking for revenge and ash sure. falling from the sky and <laughs> destroying the fbi like, and the CIA. like phil labonte said uh when he was on yeah. tim cast a couple weeks where he's like i want 
everyone fired. He's like, I yeah. want the buildings they work in raised to the ground <laughs> or sold. I just, he's like, I don't yeah. want them to exist any longer. Yeah. I I started <laughs> rewatching Parks and Rec, and uh, so Ron Swanson, the most famous libertarian of them all, he goes, my ideal government is the government is whittled down to one guy who decides who we do and who we don't nuke. And he is selected <laughs> through some form of a decathlon and an IQ test. And he goes, that's all I want government to be. Right. A guy sitting there with the nuke buttons going, oh, North Korea fucked up today? Goodbye. Right, Government's yeah. done for the day. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm for it. It's not a bad idea. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we got uh, we got three clips here. Uh, we're gonna play one is we're gonna so two. I think we'll start maybe with the two from the debate, and then we'll end it with Trump, uh, and then we'll go a little bit into him and uh, and Tucker there, and kind of give our takes yeah. on the whole thing. I think I have a little bit of yeah. an interesting take on that whole thing that you'll you'll appreciate. So I'm going it, to. Baby. All right, let's see if this works. We're gonna try screen sharing here, folks. We're sorry, uh, on, people. We don't know what's yeah, about to happen. Yeah, we we have no idea. I was playing with this before, and uh, the the sound was doubling up. I spent like a half an hour trying to fix it. I think I did. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, so uh, we'll see what happens here. First clip, it's uh, going to be, which was like the third or fourth question they asked everyone. And uh, this, Is this raise your hands, everybody? Yeah, this is. They asked them about Trump, like, will you will you support Trump? So, yeah. uh, again, like, I, I liked the, what we did on the GOP forum thing where we picked a couple clips, which we thought the most interesting, mm -hmm. and then we commented on it. So that's what we're going to do here again today. Uh, we got this, and then we have um, a clip about Ukraine, and, Ukraine then, yeah. I think, and then we have a clip uh, of Trump and Tucker, and then mm -hmm. that'll wrap up this whole segment. So let's go. You all signed a pledge to support the eventual Republican nominee. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Pause. Did you did I, what a game yeah. of follow the leader? Yeah, follow the leader. Wow. Uh, th th look, this, this, this one, was, this one surprised me because I mean, no, no, no. This one surprised me because this is a very poor move by DeSantis. Like I expect, obviously, DeSantis is just doing whatever he has to do at this point to kind of mm -hmm. remain popular. But the fact that he didn't have, like, the presence of mind to know not to be the last one to raise his hand uh, and to not look left and right, like, to like he obviously read the room, yeah, right? Like, he wanted to see what the crowd's reaction was and what the rest of the candidates' Real reaction was. Real awkward Michael Scott move. It was yeah. very awkward, yeah. And, mm. like, that's oh, – and, and that's been DeSantis's campaign, dude, just mistake after mistake after mistake. And this was another big one. What I was just listening to on on Timcast is that, you know, he's he did great as a governor, and Same there right is here, newfound way. problems. That's what I was annoyed at when you guys sent me the video last night. I was like, I can't see who's who. I only know who Chris sure. Christie okay. is because he's the largest one, <laughs> and Vivek because he's you know. But, so uh, so so for, so for people watching, uh, the center, the two at the center on the left is DeSantis, on the hmm. right is Vivek. Uh, to Vivek's uh, to the right of Vivek is then Nikki Haley. Tim Scott, some guy. I did no idea who this guy even is. Greer or some shit. He's running out of nowhere. Mr. Meaningless. To the left of DeSantis is Mike Pence, uh, a, a hot air balloon called Chris Christie, and uh, <laughs> a Ada Hutchinson or Asa Hutchinson, whatever yeah. his name is. I think it's Trump Asa. calls him yeah. Ada, right? Now. I, yeah. I actually call him Ada now because I forget yeah. his fucking yeah. name is. Yeah. Okay. What, what was the point um, you were making before? You know, if, uh, I was listening to Tim Pool, and they were saying, like, just DeSantis doesn't have it that no, the no. commanding the it factor. Yeah. Yeah. The it the commanding it factor. It's it's he's slow to the reaction. He's maybe he's a little bit more calculated, but like you don't you don't connect with people and you don't connect with voters when you're slow to that reaction. You see Trump and I don't know what Trump is like in person. But, you know, you constantly hear about him making people laugh, taking photos, this and that. And that's where DeSantis is dropping the ball, you know, and for him to just look around and wait. The only person that has balls on that stage is Vivek. And that's just arm up. No problem. Sure. This is a word we've been using a lot lately. It's a fancy word. I really like it because it's yeah. interesting. The zeitgeist. Uh, DeSantis cannot capture the zeitgeist at all. 
he, where Trump is the opposite. Mm-hmm. All he does for the most part, and he's at his best when he's capturing the zeitgeist, like the mood, the thing. He's mm-hmm. at the you know the Ohio Palestine train thing, like shaking hands with people and looking like a normal person. DeSantis is here, always looking awkward in in uh, you know like when he's with regular people. Uh, here on stage, he looks awkward, like looking around to see like what the temperature of the room is. Uh, it, it's it's going to go down as a case study on the worst mm-hmm. campaign possibly ever run. Like the guy. Somebody said somebody he, said yeah. Vivek is running the campaign. DeSantis should be should have should have. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I think so. All right. Let's uh, let's let's keep going here. Uh, this uh, this clip is edited to just see how hot uh, Vivek comes out of the gate here on this topic. Mm hmm. President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. And Chris Christie, honest to God, your claim that Donald Trump is motivated by vengeance and grievance would be a lot more credible if your entire campaign were not based on vengeance and grievance against one man. He knew. Want to see a bunch of people blindly bashing. Donald Trump without an iota of vision for this country. They could just change the channel to MSNBC right now. But I'm not running for president of MSNBC. I am running for president of the United States. We're skating on thin ice and we cannot set a precedent where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents. It is wrong. We have to end the weaponization of justice in this country. 30 seconds, Governor DeSantis. Let me tell you I'm sorry. 30 seconds, Governor You make me laugh because... You sit, you, sit, you sit here in an answer. You sit here in an answer. Right. He, he's got nothing. He gets basically booed. So he gets basically booed out of even giving an answer here. That's that's basically it. He has nothing. No Meaning comeback. This. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There to to come back with at all. Yeah. That was, that was interesting. You know, Vivek, Vivek is on fire, and I hope he's smart enough to know that this is a ploy for the long game. You know, I yeah. think he's going to have a great opportunity working for the Trump administration and then hopefully running again if he's not full of shit. Yeah, of course. You know, like we, like I always some, say, uh, double yes, agent, take yeah. everything with a grain of salt. You should be skeptical of every politician. I will say uh, Vivek's answer uh, to, to Christy was, how, you know, how you are accusing Trump of running a, a revenge campaign. Mm-hmm. I want Trump to run a revenge campaign, though, right? Oh, Captain over yeah, here is like, running a revenge campaign. Yeah, you know, like, I, I, and that's not what uh, Vivek is doing. Like, I, I understand, like, his vibe and his uh, selling point is like, I'm going to unite everybody and give us a, mm-hmm. a shared national identity again. And, and okay, great. Like, that's what you want to do. Fine. It's being successful for him. But I don't know. Like, James from We the People Radio tagged me in a, in a post a couple of weeks ago, and it was like an anarchist. And uh, he was reading, the anarchist was reading a article. And it's like Trump promises revenge on government if elected. And it's like the anarchist was like reading the article. And he's like, hmm. Like, yeah, I want as an anarchist, I want revenge yeah. on the government. Yeah. If I'm going to channel that revenge through John- Donald Trump, then so be it. That's exactly what I'll take. So I hope that Trump is running a revenge campaign. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, that's our opinion. But yeah, I, that's that's <laughs> what I want. That's why I'm so keen on the heels of, of getting on the Trump train, man. You know, he's got this dominating lead. Uh, that's why this debate to me was just a dog and pony show. You want the real debate? You take the top three guys. And that's yeah. it. Man. Well, we'll see. People... Even if Trump doesn't. Sh- and and last night, truthfully, was the death of the mainstream media. Oh, it yeah. Was. Well, yeah, that's my original MSNBC point. Here. Is 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 called out as just fake news. They have no interest. Trump didn't want to be a part of this because none of those guys would have had any any chance to shine because it would all been just let's bash donald trump it was a lot about him without him even being there yeah Yeah, so imagine if he was there and i said this last night in the group chat trump is an opinion not a policy why at the debates sure are we talking about their opinions and not their policies yeah i get it Uh, this is why i'm dog and pony show that's what democracy is though buddy this is why i'm an anarchist i get it Right. Yeah, like it's a popularity yeah. contest. No one actually really gives a shit about policy as much as they might say they do. Like me and you might. But majority of people uh, will make their decision in this election on how funny Trump is and all these things. Yeah. He's going to I swear to God, that's exactly what's going to get yeah. him elected. Him being funny and him at the like him having good com- comedic timing is what's going to get him elected, if anything, again. 
So that's the flaw with democracy. Like that and, and Republican male The best voting. person for the job does not get chosen for the job. The best policies don't get chosen. It's a popularity contest, right? And then when the government is the largest it's ever been, it's a dangerous fucking popularity yeah. contest, right? All right, let's move on to the, right, next, on the next topic, one. which was the war in Ukraine. When we did our... Um, when we did our GOP forum episode, it uh, oh look at that. this is all fucked up already. I knew it. So let me stop this real quick. Uh, you know this is the uh, the Zoom error I thought we might have. Let's try it out one more time. If not, I, we might have to skip this. Okay, there we go. I got it. Sorry, it's the timing. We're gonna have to get like the timing of pushing the buttons right here. That apparently is <laughs> that apparently is a thing. I got a stream deck here. I got to push that button first. Then I got to push the uh, the Zoom screen share button so that the captain in here could see. If I don't do it in that exact order, everything's all fucked out of whack. All right. So when we did our, our presidential forum thing, I chose like the war in Ukraine is like the most uh, topics that we looked at, and I thought it was because like that's the only place they these fucking guys differ mm -hmm. at all. Uh, so they're going to be asked here on uh, their position again. A little bit more directly this time, uh, as opposed to when uh, Tucker did it. So let's hear what they had to say. The administration is now asking Congress for $24 billion more. Regardless of that, the specific specifics of that plan, is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not support it. <laughs> and pause it. Pause it. I, uh, real Boy, quick, you want to catch everyone with their pants down? Yeah. There you go. That image right there. Yeah. Real quick, that should be a meme. I, I don't know if anybody's made that a meme yet. Like this right here. This <laughs> this this still that we're on. Just of one guy raising his hand, and then like at the top, it should be a question like, "Who you know likes chicks with dicks?" And then one <laughs> yeah. guy just raises his hand or some shit like that. Um. Yeah. This is fucking telling, isn't it? Right. One guy raises his hand. For those who are listening, it's Vivek. Uh, DeSantis, this is the like DeSantis gives the most DeSantis response. Possible DeSantis gives this. Trump's NATO speech where we're going to make NATO pay for yeah. NATO. You know, he like, doesn't yeah. like raise his hand. He like puts his hands to the side and then he starts yeah. talking immediately before he's even called on. And he's talking about how like, well, we have to have a clear, uh, a clear cut objective. And Europe, you needs know to why pay that its is fair share. Good. Because Ukraine is the one thing that is going to kick DeSantis out of this race. Yeah, he I think I think the majority of American people, I think MAGA is bigger and stronger and more loyal than ever. I think not the Republicans in Congress. We, the people who consider ourselves conservatives and Republicans are bigger and stronger than ever. I think the people who are in favor of America first and and are just done with all this, you know, woke World Economic Forum agendas. I think we are truly the majority and I think the majority of people are done with Ukraine. There's definitely a lot of people supporting them and don't want war and don't want them to die. But I think the majority of people are tired of just this unlimited bankroll being sent over there to eventually going to happen where we uh, we start sending our own men and women over there to fight and start World War Three. That's what's going to kill his campaign yeah. by being in favor of Ukraine. Sure. Uh, I think you're half right, perhaps. I think uh, maybe not a majority of all Americans uh, oppose it, but definitely the overwhelming majority of all conservatives, mm -hmm. Republicans and libertarians, I'd say, uh, if you could combine those three groups, uh, yeah. uh, you know, they uh, and the MAGA people, let's say four groups. Uh, majority of all of them. I'm talking about like normal people here, not like the donor class in Washington, D.C. and right. political no, fucking yeah. advisors. Like normal people that are on the right, if you want to call mm -hmm. it that. Uh, they all oppose this. I think... All those people with their hands down have lobbyists giving them money, campaign donations that are in favor of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. I think what... Again, I know you said like, you know, this is a horse and pony show and there's not much meaning to all this stuff. There's a lot of meaning in it right there. That's how close we are right there to going back to the Republican Party that it's always been the Bush, yeah, the Warhawk neo Party, yeah. Warhawk Party. Like if it wasn't for that one guy right there on that fucking stage raising his hand mm -hmm. and Donald Trump, who's also pretty much against or, or at least for ending the war, it go the like you have no options again. It goes back to mm -hmm. George Bush a war here, a war there, a war everywhere. We'll get Kamala Harris <laughs> on you. Right. Because wars are the place to go or, or, or whatever. 
I, I think there is some knowledge there to, to be shared. And again, on DeSantis, he licks his finger and puts it up in the air to see which way the wind is blowing. And he can't even yeah. do that well. I think, actually, we might see it here. I think Vivek, let's roll the tape and let's see what happens here. Yeah. And do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy. He's still got his hand. But you're saying you would not too, <laughs> Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe do, p- pull their weight. Uh, right would, now they're not doing you that. Not and I think we need to do it. Look at Vivek's hand on the right. It should be contingent on them doing it. And I would have support in China. You see, you see all right, this is what I was talking about. So Vivek literally, so for those who are listening, Vivek licks his hand and it's off camera now. His finger is up. Yeah. Like he licks his finger and puts it up to the wind. It's essentially uh, insinuating that DeSantis is just trying to see which way the wind blows. And that's what his uh, position on this policy, on this, on this position is. Yeah. So that took some balls, dude. I have to say, it's pretty yeah. funny the way he's laughing at it. Yeah. And uh, and and look, man, I've talked about this at length. This has been my main criticism of of uh, DeSantis. We've talked about this with Pilsner's pol- Pils, uh, Benji from Pilsner's and politics. Like, no, he's just pro the war. That's it. Like, I I know exactly what it is. I know I could see right through it. Uh, and his position here is like, no, we need to send more money. Just the Europeans got to also do yeah. it. So like overall, though, he's just advocating for more money. He's just not saying specifically that we should be the ones spending more money. He would send it. Pathetic. Let's be real. Yeah, no, he yeah. would. And, and he pro, would also convince war. Europe to send more. So more escalation, yeah. essentially, is DeSantis' opinion. Yeah. I'm going to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you would not support an increase of funding to Ukraine. I would not. And I think that this is disastrous that we are protecting against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our own southern border here in the United States of America. We are driving Russia further into China's hands. The Russia-China alliance is the single greatest threat we face. And I find it offensive that we have professional politicians on the stage that will make a pilgrimage to Kiev, to their Pope, Zelensky, without doing the same thing for people in Maui or the south side of Chicago okay. right, or Brett, Kensington. I think on. that we have to put I'm the in. interests of Americans I mean, first, he was secure our own border instead of somebody else's. He was referring and the reality they is did not is like also how we project. That was a burn, dude. They did Pope not Zelensky. like the Pope Zelensky. Yeah. They did not like that is a thumb in the eye of the establishment yeah. right there. I saw some fucking shitty people online uh, use the line of thinking like, oh, that was a dig at Mike Pence, who's like a devout Christian. And it's this Hindu nah. bastard who's trying to say, like, you know, mock his religion or, or yeah. whatever. That's like the level of, you know, stupidity that this yeah. uh, primary is getting like the. The, the gymnastics they yeah, have, and to also do. like the attacks on Vivek have ramped up tremendously now that he's become like mm-hmm. uh, you know the second mm-hmm. person uh, you know past the poll here. So he said things that you shouldn't say. So we need to get him. The yeah. knives are out. See how this shit works? Like the Republican mm-hmm. you know base or you know political base at least will become basically just Democrats. Like you're a racist. Yeah. You're bad. You said mean things about Christianity. Because you're, you know, you're a bigoted Hindu person or whatever. Fuck. Meanwhile, the left insinuate. hates Christianity. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's wrap this up. Strength and by making America strong at home. All right. All right. So Vivek's point is uh, America yeah. strong at home. You mean make America great again? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Like <laughs> um. Yeah. So Vivek, no war. Everybody else, war. That's uh, you know. So again, I said on the last episode, man, like we're we're lucky. We got three people right now running for president and four. Let's lump in. Uh, uh, Cornell West of the Green Party. He's uh, pretty good on the war in Ukraine, and we're still waiting on the Libertarian Party to do something. We, you know, we spoke to Mike, <laughs> uh, but they haven't uh, had the convention yet and uh, nominated their nominee. So at least at the moment, three major candidates uh, are like anti-establishment, and uh, that's something to be said at least. Yeah, thank God. Yeah. All right, one more clip. We are going to go on over to the old Trump, to dog. Trump and Tucker now. Um, before we get into this, man, what did you think of this entire interview just in general? I want to get your take. I liked it. Um, do I think it was worth 230 million people viewing in? No. Um, I think there was a lot of interesting points. Um, the biggest thing that one of the biggest things that took me back was, uh, Tucker, sorry, I have indigestion from drinking all this tequila. It's okay. Uh, was Tucker was like, so they protested you, they impeached you, they impeached you again. Now they indict you. 
what's next tucker put it on the table like do you think they're gonna kill you do you think they're mm -hmm. gonna try and kill you do you think they're gonna try and harm you and you know trump danced around it and he didn't say yes he didn't say no i was i was talking to somebody just recently about this if the indictments don't work i really believe nothing is off the table it will get you know they haven't killed him yet because we would know who did it you know what i mean it'd be so blatantly obvious of who did it but i think it could very well get to a point where they don't care if you know who did it you know right what I like mean? you push them too far uh, like they get yeah. you know again like yeah. a, a, an a cornered animal is dangerous right this yeah. is also the uh, argument we've made with putin right like they've pushed you know like they've pushed too far uh, against mm -hmm. Putin and like yeah of course now he's gonna lash out right like that's what happens yeah, when, drop uh, a nuke. when yeah. autocrats like you know are cornered and they think that their lives are in danger or their whole mm -hmm. system their corrupt system is in danger they might lash out yeah. like they're the same as Putin I, I, so yeah <laughs> I think that was very interesting I would have liked but I guess it's an ongoing investigation it's an ongoing case I would have liked to have heard or some questions about Trump's upcoming game plan to to battle these indictments in court mm -hmm. but i guess you know with a little bit of perspective you can't really talk about an ongoing trial like that sure you don't want to let the cat out of the bag now but i thought it was great and i i hope we see some more of it because i think trump has such a commanding lead in the gop that i don't think he needs to get involved in these debates for quite some time i don't think he needs to take the abuse anymore from mainstream media why show up if they're just going to attack them? Uh, I don't I don't even think Trump needs to campaign anymore. I think these trials, provided they're televised, are going to be Trump's campaign. You just you just look at what's going on. The guy is Superman. The more indictments you throw at him, the more popular he becomes. I have to save the some more money fake somehow. News, yeah, the more fake news you throw at him, the stronger he becomes. And I think the MAGA crowd and his followers are so loyal at this point they're not jumping ship their vote oh, yeah, yeah. is already yeah. cast yes, for him. of course you know what i mean yeah and but that and that was the problem i had with a lot of the people on the debate stage who like what well, do any of these guys have that they're going to take maga voters away yeah or turn they're delusional democrats sure. republican at this know. point in time yeah i agree I, I do however think in terms of the general election I do think MAGA people are a little bit too confident in how many MAGA people there are. I do not think I majority think of, more. but I'm, I think they think there's a lot more MAGA people than there are MAGA mm -hmm. people. I'm not saying that a lot of people won't vote for Trump. A lot of people did right. vote for Trump last time, but but I, majority of the population is not a diehard. I wear the hat and Fair. go to the driving rally. Yeah. Uh, and you have know. the cardboard cut out. Yeah, exactly. House. Right, like a majority of people are not. So so where where do you win? You win, you know, and the the numbers are like in between, right? And Trump needs to, he's, of course, like his diehard supporters, the base. Is going to vote for him, but he. There are people to win over, or win over, or maybe not necessarily win over in their minds, but he's got to convince them to actually go and vote. Like, dude, how many people don't go vote on election day? Mm -hmm. They just don't like because I, don't know, I got work Very and I want to go, right? Yeah. Like, he yeah. needs to. They maybe those people would vote for him, but they're not diehard supporters. He needs to make sure that they get their ass up off their fucking chair on election day and go vote. That's what like guys like Fair Scott point. Pressler, what he's doing is amazing. Like he's doing the groundwork of like going places and like convincing mm -hmm. people why they should go vote and all and get them registered and, and things like that. So yeah. uh, in terms Fair of this, uh, in terms of this interview with uh, Tucker man. So I have a little bit of a different take. I've been like waiting for the Trump podcast, right? Like I've been wanting him to go on Rogan and have the long conversation and get some goddamn nuance out of the guy and like mm -hmm. really see who he is beneath it all. This is kind of like the first crack we're getting at that. And I'm not going to say that uh, Tucker didn't have some good points. We're going to play one. There were some funny moments. But uh, I think that Tucker, I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I felt like Tucker didn't really ask him that many hard questions. Uh, like I feel that. Especially, I feel that. You know, like there was a kind of a couple, a couple softballs. There's one point where he allows Trump to go on like an eight-minute rant about water nozzles. And like yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. the the shower and stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, OK, like, I don't know. I you know, not that big yeah. of an issue on people's minds right now, <laughs> like water nozzles, you know. So yeah. uh, and this is only like it's like 45 minutes total. Like I was like, while mm -hmm. while that eight minute conversation was I'm like, oh, no, this is going too long. Like we're losing time here to get something interesting. So yeah. my 
I was a little bit disappointed. I feel like it's got to be Rogan still. Uh, it's up to Rogan to get this guy in and like really. I don't think Rogan wants him on. He's 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 thinking about it. He's seriously considering okay. it now. Because you but, know, if he has him on, everybody's gonna be like, Spotify uh, needs to kind of yeah, his contract. Nah, that, that that's gonna be the most listened to thing okay. of all time, even more than this probably. I still think Rogan's the guy to drill down and uh, get some nuance out see of Trump. Happens, we yeah. will see. Trump is a hard guy to get nuance out of, though. I will. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see if we could fuck this up again here. Let's button screen share. Let's see. Did it work? Okay. So uh, one of the hard uh, or one of the like interesting questions is uh, Tucker asked somebody about Jeffrey Epstein. You ain't going to see a fucking question like this ever on the corporate news. No. So that's no. at least one positive, for, in my opinion, here yeah. for Tucker. Uh, and this is within, I thought it was funny, it was within like the first five minutes. So I will give Tucker this is how, a credit there. This is how I know mainstream media is dead. Just a question like this. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. Yeah, Again, this is something you would not ever hear on the Republican debate stage. So, all right, let's let it play, and uh, we'll give our thoughts after. It's just interesting. I read Barr's account of his time. He wrote a book about it, right? Uh, his autobiography. And in it, he lies about Jeffrey Epstein's death. Clearly lies. Uh, do, you, do you think Epstein killed himself sincerely? I don't know. I, I will say that, you know, he was a fixture in Palm Beach. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what Barr said about it either. I have no idea what he said. What did he say? He killed himself, probably? He said he killed way? himself and that they were going to do this investigation. They never did the investigation. They're talking about Bill Barr, Trump's uh, yeah. you know, top guy uh, in the Justice Department, just for, for context there. It's never been yeah. public, well, and they hit it, and like, why are they doing that? He and clearly Barr knew, but why would Bill Barr be covering up the death of Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, Bill Barr didn't do an investigation on the election fraud either, okay? He said he did, and he pretended he did, but he didn't. Uh, uh, McSwain, the U.S. attorney in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, uh, said Barr, uh, Barr just wouldn't let him do it. It was crazy. Barr became so petrified, so frightened of being impeached. They were gonna impeach him. I don't know if you remember it. Yeah. It's not a big moment in history. But they said, we're going to impeach. You know, they play a much rougher game, the left, the lunatics. And they were going to impeach Bill Barr. And he was petrified. Now, how do you not get impeached? Don't do any of this stuff. But he didn't do the job there. Uh, I don't know what he did with Epstein, but possibly he did Do you think do it's that. possible that Epstein was killed? Oh, sure, his... it's possible. I, I mean, I don't really believe. I think he probably uh, committed suicide. He had a life with, you know, beautiful homes and beautiful everything, and he, uh, all of a sudden, he's incarcerated and not doing very well. I would say that he did, but there are those people, there are many people, I think you're one of them, right? But a lot of people think that he, uh, he was killed. He knew a lot on a lot of people. He was killed, you I think. think. So? I think the, more, the closer you look, I'm not a conspiracy person at all. I believe everything I hear. Uh, but not yeah, the, you're the not. closer you look into it, <laughs> I mean, the Attorney General of the United States, your Attorney General, yeah. clearly lied about the Epstein death. Yeah, and he was. Why? He was uh, certainly it wasn't well done. They had no cameras. They had no anything. Everybody was sleeping, and you know, there the a case could be made. Look, I'm not going to get involved in it, but I can tell you, a case could be made either way. But uh, it certainly wasn't the most well-run place. So, so the reason I'm asking you is, I'm looking at the trajectory since 2015. All right, so uh, I don't know, man. A little bit of a disappointing answer there from Trump, at least I, from my perspective. And I thought yeah. this was the one place where Tucker actually was pretty aggressive. He was like, hey, it was right. your guy, Bill Barr. Yeah. Uh, and, and for those also who are listening, I, I think there's a, a deeper connection there as well between Epstein and Bill Barr. Uh, the Unfit State um, has covered this Ghislaine well. Ghislaine Maxwell uh, yeah. was in... Ghislaine Maxwell... What the fuck was that? Okay, whatever. Um... <laughs> Bill Barr's dad is involved with that. Yeah, Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah. yeah, is involved with with somebody in Barr's family, His and it dad, has to yeah. do with nine eleven. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't Zach, admit that was a story from a Statesman long time and, ago. Uh, Whitney Webb yeah. covered this well, uh, so there's like a rabbit yeah. hole there to go down. So, yeah. Um, go ahead. So I, I can understand where you're. You know, you're a bit disappointed. Um, I think Epstein was killed. Let's be real. He had a lot on a lot of people. Trump admitted that. Or, uh, I'm sorry, Tucker might have admitted that. Um, he he had the dirt on all the people that would get you killed if you were to release this dirt. 
Uh, there was no cameras. All the guards were sleeping. They put him in the cell with that brick shit house cop murderer, that giant Roy yeah. Rage monster with his uh, Tartaglione. His yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I think he was killed. But on top of that, I think Trump's just playing coy. Perhaps. He probably knows, and he can't say. Or I mean, my ultimate my personal the captain's conspiracy theory here just to you know no, one story. of those huh first time there's a first yeah. time for everything yeah. on to do yeah. man podcast. well we're on kick so i gotta give them one right give them a little taste um i think epstein flipped and i think epstein dropped the dime on everyone and the little black book and that's why there's been no arrest because it's going to be a much bigger arrest and the best way to keep epstein safe is to fake his death and who would be in on something like that? Good old Donnie Trump possibly would be yeah. in on something like that. So wouldn't it be crazy if, you know, Trump gets another indictment somewhere, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, you know what? We're going to call a witness to the stand. Jeffrey Imagine. Epstein. And he, and he the, just, the, like you know, Stone Cold, the glass breaks. Yeah. It's Jeffrey Epstein. He's running down the <laughs> ramp with a chair. Yeah. 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 Or on an ATV, man. Just, yeah. Yeah. I, I. For as big as the Jeffrey Epstein pedophile island saga is with the <laughs> amount of celebrities, yeah. with the amount of celebrities and politicians and royal members, members of the royal family involved, you have to go to extreme lengths to take down an organization. Yeah, like I, I agree there. Sure. It's not an so easy feat. Either they faked his death or they killed him just in time. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think Trump's just playing coy there. But could be. I could be wrong. One of the things it. I took out of it is uh, I said, I'm not going to get involved. Uh, no, motherfucker, you better get involved if you become president again, right? Like, you <laughs> yeah. are the top guy. Yeah. I want the revenge Trump, not the I'm going to play nice yeah. with the bad people Trump, right? Yeah. So if you do get involved, uh, you know, reelected, like, no, get involved and let's get to the bottom of this thing yeah. and, uh, yeah, so. get air out all the dirty laundry of these evil fucking people. Please, for the love of God. Yep. Otherwise, uh, if you don't, uh, and you Just win and you happen. don't, then I got four years on this podcast of, uh, you know, I'm going to be rubbing that in the face of all the yeah. MAGA people who tried to convince me as to why enough, I should yeah. uh, vote for Trump again. All right. Fair let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. We got tweets. So, yeah, so oh, the week. Anybody new uh, to the two do men, anybody tuning in kick for the first time to watch us. We end each and every show with what we call tweets of the week. They're just funny tweets. Uh, that Thoughtful we found things, entertaining yeah. throughout the week, or they, or they kind of you know correlate to what, what we have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think I got one or two. I think I got one or two that correlate to. You got four, so we're uh, gonna start with you. Yeah, uh, and, we'll and I got a good old Trump history one in there. Okay. I think I'll be adding one of those every week. <laughs> Go for it. All right, Rob Reiner, the man who led an opposition to Vladimir Putin, was killed in a plane crash. This is how an autocratic government executes your enemies this is what donald trump aspires to if he is allowed to return to the white house our 24 7 ye oh, oh, our 247 years of self-rule will be no more what I, this is such an old playbook if trump's elected women won't be able to vote slavery will be back trump's just gonna he already was in office for four years and he made peace with everybody but now all of a sudden he's gonna we're gonna bring back the whole situation of how he's just gonna start bombing the rest of the world right like as they're brought us to the brink of nuclear war yeah. you know yeah. they said that he was gonna uh you know i think all these uh cases and charges against trump like it's possible that like the death penalty is also on the table yeah, so like is. isn't that it ironic is. right like yeah like mm -hmm. again the the iron law of woke projection no you guys are trying to fucking kill your opponent mm -hmm. who's trump so and and here's somebody who I guarantee you we could go back on his Twitter page oh, and yeah. there's countless tweets of him. Oh, Trump's in cahoots with yeah. Putin. Trump's in cahoots. But now if he gets reelected, he's going to kill Putin. Yeah, he's a regular okay. uh, offender on the uh, okay. fine L's, Rob Reiner. OK. All right. Let's go over to one of mine. I got one from Jeremy Kaufman of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. He is an interesting uh, character, to say the least, in the news lately. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Kaufman says racism is the new witchcraft. Claims of racism are rarely provable claims about actions. Typically, they're claims about a secret state of someone's internal being that are unfalsifiable. Once accused, saying I'm not racist works about as well as I'm not a witch in 1690. 
You know, I, you know, if a woman could do math in 1690, <laughs> string her up. She's a witch. Yeah. Now, you know, you work out in the morning. Mm-hmm. You're a healthy white male. You're racist. Sure. So again, like Jeremy Coffin's been really in the controversial world in the Libertarian yeah. Party for some of his controversial racially tinged tweets lately. But damn it, that's a fucking good point. If someone calls mm-hmm. you a racist, like you can't really necessarily prove that you're not because that's like your feelings inside of you. Yeah. No one will ever for certain know 100 percent if you're Just a racist or not. It. Unless like yeah. we have some sort of machine that could read each other's thoughts. And then could that, you know what I mean? So it's a good fucking trust point. me. The CIA is working on it. Yeah. It's called Facebook. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go over to Trump history. The captain here. Oh, boy. You're going to like this one. OK. Trump <laughs> history. <laughs> I, I did see this one, but it's it's just as funny the second time. Donald Trump tells a young Vivek Raswami that he will choose him to be his VP in the 2024 <laughs> presidential election. Hysteric. I love how in all these things, Trump is always the exact same age. He never ages. Yes. He's just his yes. age that he is now. Yeah. Well, there's the conspiracy that he's a time traveler, right. and this and proves Baron, that he's a time yeah, traveler. Yeah, this yeah. is fun. I love the Vivek here. Like, this looks like Vivek as a child. Yeah. Kind of looks like our buddy yeah. Ryan, too, like when he was a yes. baby or something. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Ryan. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to uh, my next one. That is a gold page. Yeah. That is, is a gold star page, I must say. All right. My next one is from Brianna Joy Gray. She is re- uh, responding to Harry J. Sisson, the shit lib uh, TikToker uh, who's a pro Biden uh, person. Uh, so real quick, I, I'll read Harry's first. This is a two parter. Uh, Harry goes, people like Brianna are the worst of the left. They think voting green. Hang on. Voting green does anything positive. Talking about the Green Party. Remember mm-hmm. we were talking about before Cornell, Cornell West. Um, Trump, a proven sexual abuser and a four-time indicted fraud, will likely be on the ballot, and you decide to act all high and mighty? Give me a break. Just put your red hat on already. That is an extreme claim for Brianna Joy, Joy Gray, to be a uh, Trump supporter. She's a complete mm-hmm. opposite. She, she is a leftist through and through. Uh, so Brianna Joy Gray goes, the DNC is paying this man to slander me baselessly because his chosen candidate is so weak and unpopular that he has no affirmative arguments to make in Biden's defense. All he can do is log on to smear those who want to vote for progressive rather than a segregationist pal whose own VP said she believed the Me Too allegations against him. Anyway, it's a free country, and you can vote green if you want, even if it makes white suburban Zoomers wet their pampers on Maine. That's a solid fucking point. No matter what her political party is, solid point. Yeah, people need to start standing up for the for outside of the the left and the right. Yeah, like that that Green old Party, the Libertarian Party. Trope, yeah. Like this is the most important election ever, and if you vote for like mm. some other third party, uh, you're, you're going to get Trump, Trump elected. The election. Yeah. And like that's what the yeah. Republicans are saying. Like if you vote for the Libertarians, you're going to get Biden elected. It's yeah. you know no, that's not how it works. You just vote for who you want to be fucking president. That's it. And if Brianna Joy mm-hmm. Gray wants to vote for Cornell West, then more power to her. Yeah, fine by me. Yep. All right. Where are we at? Third one. Oh, I don't think I believe. Oh, can I see? Yeah, I can. I'm not blocked by a by a Brooklyn dad yet. <laughs> well, it's still good. Okay. So I, I put I chose this for not for the tweet, but I've seen enough. The winner of tonight's debate is President Biden. Hashtag Dark Brandon wins. This was the most ridiculous thing about Twitter last night. All these lefty loons. Biden won the debate. Biden won the debate. What? Just okay. Yeah, Yeah. you're pro Biden. You know, like you say, just keep your mouth shut. But secondly, this dark Brandon thing, whoever is championing this name, you are a fucking rube. Okay, this couldn't be anything further from what you need Brandon uh, Joe Biden to look like. Thirdly, that picture is ridiculous. Doesn't it look a little AI ish in the same way that we saw that? No, I no, 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 no. In the same way that the Trump history page yeah. produces a picture, sure. very similar style, artistic style of pictures. They need Joe Biden to be Donald Trump. It's it's getting to the point now that they hate Trump so much that they want Biden to be Trump. Yeah, basically. Uh, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, you're, this made me think back to more of the Tucker and Trump thing. Uh, one good point uh, t- uh, Trump had on the interview was he was like, I don't know what they're doing, like. Sending the guy to the beach 
every weekend. Yeah. Like, what are they thinking? Yeah. Like, he doesn't if, look. Good. I wish he can't pick up. I a wish chair, if Trump beach said chairs. he's yeah. like the beach chair, two ounces, really lights, two ounces. He can't yeah. pick it up. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was he's walking on toothpicks. Like just political gamesmanship wise. You know, like, someone. What I always idea. what what bothers me is it's OK for Joe Biden to go to the beach. But if Trump got, went golfing, impeach him. Impeach him. Well, yeah. Trump couldn't leave the White House for anything personal. But meanwhile, Joe Biden has taken more vacation days as president, more than any president in the history of the United States. You picked that low hanging fruit, Captain. I love you for it. Yep. All right. Let's go over to my last tweet and then one more from the captain after this and we'll wrap it up. This one's from uh, Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk goes, whiteness is great. Be proud of who you are. Boy, I mean, I don't know. Like Charlie yeah. Kirk must be hanging out with too many leftists that are love critical race theory at his turning point USA rallies. Uh, this is like what these leftists nowadays like want everyone to think. They want you to like lean into race being the most important thing yeah. ever. Dude, whiteness is not a thing. Whiteness is a construct. White is a construct. Black is a construct. I am Italian. If you want to be like, hey, uh, I'm proud of uh, Italian American culture, right? We make really good food or whatever. Like, okay, fine. But like, I'm whiteness is great. Be proud of who you are, dude. You're. You're now like this reminds me of Michael Malice's quote, like uh, conservatives are just the pr progressives driving the speed limit. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what this is. Charlie Kirk's a conservative. And now yeah. like he's like uh, in the sense adopting this racialist mindset of the left just from his side. Essentially, it's yeah. stupid. Yeah. All really this screams to me is white power. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, not even that. Again, it's just like leaning into yeah. the construct. Yeah. Of race. Why are you making everything about race? Yeah. We should be doesn't, trying to move again, away that from it. It doesn't make you special. Race doesn't make yeah. you special at all. It's you, the person, yeah. individually. So I thought that was Unless like you're a weak, Democrat. Weak from Charlie Kirk. Yeah. So this last one's from Elon Musk. Um, I think this might be a story in the future for us, man. Uh, Soros fund. Uh, so it's from Elon Musk. X will be filing legal action to stop this. Can't wait for discovery to start. So apparently, I don't know the full ground rules here. Elon Musk is suing George Soros. George Soros is demanding a crackdown on free speech as political speech and hate misinformation spread. Uh, the person, Michael, Michael Schellenberger, Schellenberger, Schellenberger. Schellenberger. Yeah. Uh, is talking about how the numbers are showing that hate incidents are down and they're not actually rising. Uh, it's pretty crazy for Soros to come out and demand a crackdown on free speech. You know, if you want to <laughs> scream, you're the villain, you know, just, uh, you know, just be like, I'm Lex Luthor, you know. Well, he's we selling himself the, as the good guy, right? It's hate speech. It's yeah. bad, you know, like yeah. we fucking covered that detail and nauseam on this. Uh, so I think this is very interesting. A, a billionaire who might be fighting for free speech, a billionaire who we might be able to get behind that bought Twitter. Jerry's still out on the guy. Can't fully trust him. But Soros never takes one on the chin. And now we got a big name aiming for him. Yep. I think this might be a story in the future, pal. We need elites on our side. Uh, two points I want to make here. Uh, this reminds me of that uh, interview that Elon did with that shit lib journalist who was uh, tell, tell, like, you know, asking him about like the rise in hate speech on Twitter. And uh, all mm -hmm. Elon did was like, can you give me one example of hate speech on Twitter? And the guy couldn't give it to him. And he's like, you, yeah. just, you just lied. He's like, you can't give me one example. He's like, what? Just preposterous. You come here and you've you've accused us of having more hate speech on the platform, but you can't give me one example. Like, I thought that was great. He called him out right. Just yeah. because the guy couldn't come up with one fucking example of it. So, like, that's what this is pointing to. That's what Schell Schellenberg is on fire lately, man. Uh, if you're mm -hmm. not following him, you should be. Uh, he's been doing like banger after banger. He's been doing. A, he's one of those people I'm I'm talking about all the time, like Glenn Greenwald. Like, there's still good journalists out there. Schellenberger is one of them. He was part of the Twitter uh, files. He was the guy who's uh, working on a documentary about the uh, the windmills and the and the whales and all mm -hmm. that stuff on the East Coast. He's doing. He's like on fire lately. A must follow, in my opinion. And uh, with that, tweets of the week are over, and we can wrap this thing up. All right, Doom Nation, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope, Kick, you guys will uh, welcome us with open arms and not shadow ban us. We'll see if this one gets um, pulled off YouTube. You made some controversial comments earlier about uh, yeah. about the vaccine. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that'll stand, well, but know, we'll see. We'll give it a shot. Kick for, yeah. right? Well, we're going to give it a shot we're anyway. Gonna... So <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, Doom Nation, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. 
This is an episode that you should be sharing. We talked about the COVID topics. If you don't make noise, you'll be wearing a mask again. So please get out there, like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on YouTube, Kick, Rumble, yeah. TikTok. If you're on the other are- platforms that you normally listen to us on, go to kick.com slash two do men and just subscribe to us there. Uh, you don't have to listen to us on Kick if you don't want to. It's another thing. Yes. I know it's fucking annoying and all this stuff. But again, part of fighting back against the machine is to go into other spaces that support free speech. We're, we're trying mm-hmm. something different here. If you're one of our yes. followers, help us out. Yes. So with that being said, thank you guys. We will catch you guys next week. We have another episode we're cooking up. Should be about a few conspiracies. We shall see. But on that note, adios, Doom Nation.